Wonderful. So what, what I need to now do is I need to get you to whoop and holler me to the stage to talk to you about... <laughs> I don't know how we're going to do this, but we, we're going to make it work somehow. So uh, let's, let's have a go. Take the, I was thinking about that. I, I, did, I did think about that, but I thought, no, I'm going to keep it on because... Put a hat on. Did you say... Is that what you said? Yeah, I haven't got a hat. That's a good idea. Um, no, I, I'll keep this. I will just go with this. Right. But anyway, I need a cheer because I can't just, uh, I can't just uh, start talking. Are you ready? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're too kind. <laughs> you are too kind. You're lovely, lovely people. Um, right. Now, so, uh, well, people often ask um, me when they, they know I do the Bavard. I've done it for about seven years here. And they say, well, what's your passion, Tim? Why, you know, do you talk? And I say, well, I've got loads of passions. Um, but probably my biggest passion uh, in life is is running. Any of you know that? Any of you know that about me? Maybe some of you do. But I do. I can be seen uh, most days running along the seafront. Uh, not. I don't like running on the seafront. But I tend to then go to the country park or to Coombe Haven uh, because I love to run in fields and, and woods and all that kind of stuff. So I, I'm a, I'm what's known as a, a trail runner. Um, but um, my real passion, my my in terms of running, is fell running. That's my absolute passion. Do we have any fell runners in? No. The, uh, <laughs> I didn't expect us to, to be honest. In, in the southeast, it's unusual to find a fellow fell runner. Um, so, and does anybody here, um, anybody here heard of the Bob Graham round? No. Okay. Good. Good. Uh, has anybody here visited the Lake District? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Anybody visited Keswick? Oh, okay, 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 good, good. Well, that's, that's good, that's good. Your this is good. Um, well, look, if you were to visit uh, Keswick Market Square um, on a Friday or Saturday night in the summer months, any time from sort of April through May, June, July, to about now, um, you would possibly see uh, scantily clad uh, runners uh, and you'd see them, just one or two each night, climb the steps. That's the Moot Hall in Keswick Market Square. And you'd see them around about sort of 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, maybe midnight. And one of them would climb those steps and they would stand there. They would then touch the door and they would run down those steps. A couple of other scantily clad runners would join them and they would head off. Uh, there's a Twitten just over here. And they would head off down that Twitten um, and they would head for Skidder, which is the closest mountain to Keswick. Um, and then if you came back the next day, about 23, 22, 24 hours later, you might see that same scantily clad runner. Um, but this time he would be sort of clambering up the steps and he would collapse or she would collapse at the top in a heap, but he would touch or she would touch the door. Um, and that should hopefully be within 24 hours. And that is the sort of thing that I'm going to tell you about. But why? Why does that happen? Why do they do that? And they've been doing it for years. Um, and those of you that have been to Keswick, did you ever see that? No, didn't think you would have done. Right, okay. Um, but it almost certainly would have happened when you were there. So, um, why they do it? The first recorded date when this happened um, was 1832 uh, in the Carlisle uh, Journal. Um, and back then, two Keswick men um, they travelled biggest, England's biggest mountains. They went across Scarfell Pike, Scarfell, Helvenin and Skidder, and they did that in 18 hours, and then they returned to Keswick. Um, and I love this. Considering the difficulty of ascending and descending these stupendous mountains, it may be considered the most arduous task. And I think that's kind of fair enough. Um, but um, it, essentially, that's, that's when it all begun. Um, and from 1832, what happened was that every now and again, um, a, a runner would then have another go at, at a, a various round. So this is uh, Wasdale Head uh, in the lakes. And in 18, I think it was 1862, doesn't really matter, um, the Reverend J.M. Elliot, he set out from uh, Wasdale Head. And he did nine of the biggest peaks, including Scoffell, and he returned uh, in eight and a half hours. That was in 1864, I think. Now, the thing I need to tell you about um, the Reverend Elliot is that he was a very moneyed chap. And there's a bit of a theme to this, which uh, sort of ties in in a bit. Um, so he was, as, was, um, the, uh, as were the runners that, that did it in 1832. Anyway, if we then move forward uh, 40 years, um, we catch up with this chap, um, 
So sat, if I can just find my little thing. Um, this chap here, oh, no, let me go back. Um, I don't know, that guy on the left, that is Dr. Arthur Wakefield, who was a Keswick GP. Um, but he is sitting, this is uh, George Mallory's second Everest uh, attempt. And uh, Dr. Arthur Wakefield was an accomplished mountaineer. And so he was invited on Mallory's uh, Everest attempts. Uh, and there he is sitting with some of the party. Uh, obviously, Mallory failed that year, uh, and he failed again, allegedly. Um, but um, so Wakefield was moneyed. Uh, he was a moneyed chap. Um, and he very pithily, um, he was, he was a, a very active man, uh, and he was a runner, a long-distance walker as well. And he um, codified what had been going on these past sort of few years into this sort of pithy statement. He said, uh, Dr. Wakefield's rule, to ascend the greatest possible number of peaks over 2,000 feet and to return to the starting point within 24 hours. And that's what he came up with in 1904. And then in uh, 1905, 14th of August, he left the Moot Hall in Keswick, touched the door, and he did uh, a round of 48 miles covering 21 tops, 21 of the biggest mountains, about 23,500 feet. And he got back to the Moot Hall in about 22 hours, and he was paced uh, by some people that rotated on the, on the run. So essentially, he was witnessed on the top of every mountain, and that became uh, a requirement of doing a round to be seen on the top of a mountain, otherwise it's an invalid attempt. And that all started in 1904, sort of was more sort of formalized. Uh, and then after that, we had, and he was very moneyed, okay, Dr. Wakeful, he was a very, very moneyed chap. Uh, and then we had some other people having a go. We had uh, a guy called uh, Cecil Dawson in 1916. He had a go at it. He did it again in about 22 hours. He did 21 tops, uh, but he did it on his own. Uh, and also it was during World War I, so that was deemed inappropriate. And uh, it, uh, it didn't count, uh, but he was moneyed. In 1920, we had Eustace Thomas, um, and he did 21 tops in 21 hours from, from the Moot Hall. Uh, he was 53 years old when he did it. Uh, he had another crack at it two years later in 1922. Uh, he added on some tops, but uh, he came in at 28 hours, so that was no good. It was rubbish. Uh, and uh, so he, he failed uh, to, to make the cut. Anyway, let's move forward um, to uh, our hero. Our hero is the man in the middle, this man here. This is, this is Bob. This is Bob Graham. Uh, now, Bob is an unmoneyed, unmoneyed chap. Bob is a Keswick gardener. Uh, he's a lowly Keswick gardener. I say lowly, he's just, he's, that's what he does for a living. He's, he, he's, he's a regular uh, guy like, uh, like me and like m most of us, and he's just, just working. Uh, but he's very, very fit, and he loves the mountains. Um, anyway, um, one o'clock in the morning, on Sunday the 13th of June, 1932, which was his 42nd birthday, okay, um, he decided, well, he'd set off with his paces, and he picks up some other paces on the way because they don't do the whole round with him. Uh, he starts there at Keswick, and he heads off. Actually, back then, I think he may have done it anti-clockwise, but it doesn't matter. Um, he does that entire round of the mountains, uh, and he gets back to the Moot Hall in just under 24 hours, about 23 and a half hours. And there are 42 mountains on that loop. Um, so he essentially doubles the record as it stood at the time. Um, and the total, the total distance he covered, 66 miles, 27,000 feet uh, in under 24 hours, which is a bit bonkers, um, but incredibly, incredibly uh, amazing. So I'll just show you very quickly um, the, 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 the round is kind of divided into five legs because you have four road crossings and, and at each road crossing you kind of start another leg. Um, so these are, these are the sort of mountains. On the, on the traditional now, traditional uh, way of running it is you go clockwise. Um, and anybody recognize that mountain? No, okay, that's Skidder and that's uh, above Keswick. So that's the first mountain that you would do if you're doing a clockwise round. Anybody recognize that? It is. It's not actually Helvellyn, and that's striding edge, but it is leading off Helvellyn, and you're quite right. That's not on the round. Um, I just put it up there because I thought people might recognize it. <laughs> but you, you do go very close to it. You just don't go along that. Um, how, about, how about these? Anybody recognize that? 
That's our biggest mountain. That's Scorfell Pike to the left and the Scorfell to the right. Um, and this one, how about this one? That's Great Gable. So Scorfell, that, that one before, that's on leg three. Uh, and, and that's Great Gable, that's on leg four. Now, um, so he did this thing. Uh, I didn't, uh, leg five uh, has got a few mountains in it, but they're generally considered to be fairly gentle. They're only a few thousand feet, about two, two and a half thousand feet. So they're not, uh, and there wouldn't be ones that you would necessarily immediately know. So not that you knew those actually, to be honest. <laughs> Apart from this chap over here who saved you all with his knowledge of the lakes. Um, okay, so Bob did this in 1932. And if you think back, I mean, 1932, we had no kind of sports science. We had no sports nutrition. And the clothes weren't like the running clothes we have now. Bob did it, okay, wearing shorts that you saw in the picture, a pajama top, green, um, green striped plimsolls, uh, and fueled by pickled eggs. Um, that, was his, that was his food of choice. And, um, and when he got home, so he left at one o'clock in the morning. He made it back just after midnight the following day. Then he went back to his guest house. By that time, he was running a guest house in, in Keswick. And the guests that night were his pacers that had, had, had witnessed him on various mountains. And uh, he got up in the morning and made them all breakfast and just carried on. It's remarkable. Um, anyway, so he then, uh, he does that. And then he has another go. He tries again um, a couple more times to see if he can do it quicker. Um, but on both uh, his next attempts in the 1930s, he, f he doesn't make it round uh, because of weather, which is a thing in the lakes. Um, so he doesn't make it round. But he still has that one incredible uh, record attempt that he does in 1932. Anyway, then nothing happens uh, because we have uh, the war. Uh, World War II happens. Uh, and this, this event becomes a bit of a, a forgotten feat um, until early 1960. Sorry, it's a really grainy picture. But early 1960, uh, a chap called Harry Griffin, who is a famous uh, Cumbrian writer, uh, he writes a piece for the Westmoreland Gazette. Uh, and in that piece, he talks about uh, an incredible achievement done by a, a woman called Dr. Barbara Moore. Uh, and she has just walked from, uh, and you'll be familiar with this, I'm sure, from Land's End to John O'Groats. And he is writing about this, saying this is quite remarkable, uh, that she's done this and da 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 uh, And of course, we now know that's become a thing. Um, but he says, but actually, it's not really as significant as what Bob Graham did when he did this round 30 years ago. And of course, no one knew, but everyone had, had, had forgotten about this, this thing that Bob did. Um, so this article appeared early 1960, and the two guys on the right, the one with the glasses and the guy next to him, they're Ken and Alan Heaton, uh, and they run for probably one of the premier fell running clubs in the country. You'll all have heard of it. Uh, it's in Lancashire. It's called Clayton the Moors. Yes, I knew you knew it. Uh, um, so, and that's probably our premier fell running uh, club, and they ran for that club. They read the article, and they thought, ooh, this looks like a good idea. So what they did is they wrecked the round, and then later that year, they had a go at it. Um, and uh, it was Alan, uh, the second in, uh, he, he did it. He, he went around Bob's route, and he did it in just over 22 hours. So he took a good hour off the time. Ken, his brother with the glasses, didn't make it round because he was, uh, they were doing an anti-clockwise round, and in the Newlands Valley, he crossed a stream, his glasses fell off and broke, and he had to pull out. Um, but he went back the next year in 1961, and he did it in the same time, 22 hours, but he added nine more mountains. So he did 51 mountains, uh, which is quite remarkable. Anyway, nothing then happens apart from uh, a couple of Clayton Lamour's runners. They kind of think, this is a good idea. We'll do this as well. So, uh, and they're in that pack too, Stan Bradshaw and Eric Beard. And they do it uh, th also throughout the 60s. So by 1970, five people have done this. Uh, incredible thing. Um, and then, step forward, this chap, you'll all know him. <laughs> this is Fred Rogerson. Uh, and uh, Fred Rogerson, an incredibly modest man uh, and not a, a runner, um, and sadly uh, died uh, not that many years ago. Um, but he really, alongside Bob, was, was responsible for making this thing a thing, uh, even though you don't know it's a thing. But at the end of this talk, you will know it's a thing. Um, 
because Fred, who wasn't a runner, um, he was just a very, very lovely chap, and he knew a lot of the runners, and he would support them on their rounds by pulling up in his van and parking in laybys. Uh, and as they came across the roads, he would give them food, and, and then he'd move on to the next point. So he would support them. Um, and at a dinner to celebrate these rounds in 1971, uh, when Joss Naylor, the famous legendary fell runner Joss Naylor, who knows of Joss Naylor? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stop asking. Um, anyway, Joss Naylor, probably the greatest, uh, he had done the round. So in 1971, a few of them are having dinner in a pub, and Fred says, why don't we make a Bob Graham round club? And uh, so they think, well, that's a good idea, Fred, let's do it. And the thing is, the great news is, you can all join it. It's open to everyone. Uh, there's just one requirement, um, and that is this. You have to start at the Moot Hall in Keswick, traverse the 42 summits of the round or more on foot and return to the starting point within 24 hours of starting time being witnessed on each summit. So you're happy with that? There you are, yes. You're probably all going to book holidays to the lakes and uh, you're going to do this now. Um, I can tell you that uh, since 1971, many people have, uh, have tried and failed to do it. Um, many people stand at the top of those steps on the Moot Hall with hope and optimism. And by the time they get to kind of score foul, that's it, and they often drop out about there. Um, but, uh, and, and there's a couple of people that have tried that you'll know, and they felt Chris Brasher, who knows of Chris Brasher, who, who established the London Marathon. Uh, he tried, failed. Now, you must know Ranulph Fiennes. Yes, failed. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so, anyway, um, you'll probably want to know what the fastest time is, won't you? Um, this guy, and you'll all recognize him, of course. This is Billy Bland, I'll tell you. I knew you knew him. Um, Billy Bland, uh, legendary fell runner, lives still alive, lives in Borodell, which is pretty much slap bang in the middle of that map. Um, and Billy Bland, in 1982, uh, ran the round, and he uh, ran it in 13 hours and 53 minutes, which is quite astonishing. The last time I gave this talk, uh, which is a long time ago, uh, say seven years ago, he still held the record. And that's just remarkable. Um, now. Um, and, and also bear in mind, this is 1982, no sports nutrition, no sports science, you know, not really great shoes, um, and he, he does that. Uh, and he didn't eat pickled eggs, he ate Mars bars. <laughs> that is what fueled him uh, around. But not only that, the thing I find probably most astonishing about that, he does that in 1982. Three weeks later, he runs the Wasdale uh, Horseshoe Fell Race, which is probably, it's a classic fell race, it's the hardest fell race to do, and he did that in three hours and 25 minutes in 1982. Three weeks having run, after having run the Bob Graham, and that record of three hours and 25 minutes, no one has ever got within five minutes of that time, even today. Anyway, anyway, we move forward a little bit. We move forward to 20, I think it's 2018. I'm sorry, I'm having to look at my notes because it's a long time since I gave this talk. Um, July 2018, sitting on the steps of the Moot Hall, the guy uh, to the right with the blue top uh, is Kilian Journey, I won't even ask. Um, but he is a Spanish ultra runner. Um, and to the left of him, can you see the chap? That is Billy Bland, because one of the traditions, the lovely tradition of the Bob Graham, when the record goes, and Bob would turn up to those events, to, to those uh, runs in the 60s, and meet the people that had, had uh, as they came into the Moot Hall. Uh, but there's Billy meeting Killian, because Killian had just done the round in 12 hours and 52 minutes, which is just ridiculous. You're talking 66 miles, 27,000 feet. That's virtually the height of Everest, um, and to do that, it, when it's in daylight hours is just quite remarkable. Um, and we all had thought that Billy's record would never, ever be touched. Anyway, there's more, because then, see, <laughs> I said scantily clad, uh, and this chap on the left came over from the US. Uh, his name is Jack Kensley, uh, and this, he did this in, uh, in September 22. So uh, just two years ago, literally this month, uh, two years ago, and there he is next to Billy, who now doesn't run, he cycles. Um, and uh, <laughs> um, which is sort of cheating, I guess. Um, anyway, Jack did it in 12 hours and 23 minutes, which is just ridiculous. Would you like to see Jack finishing the Bob Graham? Of course you would. Here you go. This is, uh, this is the Market Square in Keswick. And you, in a minute, he'll, he'll be visible, still scantily clad. Here he comes. Here he comes. 
And, and what's unusual is he's finishing in daylight because most people that do the round, you start around midnight and you tend to finish around midnight because, you know, and, and you start at midnight for sort of technical reasons. But when you're as, as fast as these guys, you don't, you don't need to worry about the daylight hours. Anyway, I, um, right, I'm going to now tell you, because you will have noticed uh, that I've been slightly male heavy uh, with the runners. Uh, and there's a reason for that, because until 19, uh, late 70s, uh, no woman had attempted the round. And the reason for that is that women were not allowed to fell run. Uh, I know, it's a thing. Well, they weren't allowed to compete in fell races until, it's shocking, isn't it, until 1977. And it was the same with marathons and stuff like that. It was quite shocking. It's quite bizarre to even... Anyway, uh, that's a fact. Uh, you know, we can't change that. But um, that did change in, in the late 70s. Um, and as a result, I need to tell you about some, it, it, some incredible attempts that we've had and records that have been set because the first one was in 1977 by a woman called Jean Dawes. And she went around in 23 and a half hours, um, which was pretty stunning. Um, same time as all the guys that, that were doing it around that time. Um, this woman is Jasmine Paris. She's a vet, lives in Scotland. And in 2017, April 2017, she did it in 15 hours and 23 minutes. Pretty stunning. But, but, we go to the current record holder. And this is Beth Pascal. Uh, and Beth Pascal, in July 2020, came and smashed it. She did 14 and a half hours. So she took another hour off the time, uh, which is astonishing. Beth isn't currently running at the moment. She's got an injury. But anyway, uh, she will be back. Uh, and this woman here, uh, probably one of my favorite for our runners, uh, alongside Joss, uh, this is Nikki Spinks. Um, now, Nikki, it was her record that Jasmine took because she had set the record some years ago uh, and, uh, of, eight, of 18 hours, which, bear in mind, she did that after she had just had a mastectomy and uh, was recovering from breast cancer. Um, and she went and uh, did the Bob Graham in 18 hours. But, but, and get this, uh, someone has done the Bob Graham. Well, people do the Bob Graham twice. It's called the Bob Graham double. They get to the Moot Hall, they turn around and go back again. Uh, and the record was held by a guy called Roger Bowmeister until Nicky decided to do it and took an hour off his time by doing it in 45 and a half hours. Um, which is just astonishing. Uh, unfortunately, now uh, another guy has come along and taken that, but, um, but Nicky will be back. Uh, anyway, would you, I'm going to just quickly wrap up now because would you like to know how many dogs have done it? Yeah. Yes, of course you would. Eleven. Eleven. And they've all been border collies. This dog here, this, do this is my dog. Uh, this was my dog because, a little bit sad, uh, she did uh, die in March of this year. She passed away, bless her. Um, but uh, she was nearly 15 and I I'd had her since a puppy. And she's a working cocker spaniel, never did a stroke of work. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> she loved sticks. And this is her on one of our training runs um, and, uh, up in the lakes uh, some years, many years ago. Anyway, um, and uh, well, I'll just tell you this quickly uh, because uh, we, I, I nearly I said goodbye. Well, I did say goodbye to Poppy, actually. This you won't know, but that's uh, looking at Kirk Fell. And this is one of those gullies there, um, which is known as the Bob Graham Gully. And it's quite an infamous gully. Um, there have been quite a lot of deaths on it. Um, it doesn't look too bad here, but if you just, just go down a little bit, it's a very steep uh, gully. And I was wrecking one winter uh, with Poppy, and I d would do all my running uh, just with Poppy uh, or on my own or whatever. And, uh, and we got stuck in that gully uh, in December, uh, and it was iced. And, uh, um, and, we, and we said our goodbyes. And I remember I was, uh, because I literally thought it was it. Uh, and it's interesting how time slows down when those sort of things happen. I won't go into the whole detail of the story. But I remember saying, Poppy, look, it's just, we just, I hope you make it. I'm going to do my best and we'll, we'll see what happens. She, I said that to her. She then jumped on my shoulders uh, and stayed with me as I had to, which made my little sort of exit even harder. But uh, anyway, uh, I won't tell you the whole story because we haven't got time. Uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> So I'll just finish on this, um, because that is on the left. That's me doing the Scorfell Pike Fell Race, uh, which is a, a, a quite a classic. Uh, and, and I just wanted to point out, because look, I'm, I'm, there's just, I don't know where I am in the field on that one, okay? Uh, I, I didn't, you know, I'm fell running against people that are very gnarly. They know the mountains like the back of their hands. 
but I don't care. I'm just ecstatic. I mean, you can, it's quite, quite clear, I think. And then here, here, I'm sort of looking, uh, I think I won my age group in this race. This is the Furl Half Marathon. Uh, they don't do it anymore, so it's some years ago, uh, or 2015. Um, and I'm completely focused. Uh, and, and, and it's like I'm just, well, all I would say is I'm really, really bothered about the outcome here. Over here, I don't give a shit. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just leaping down Scorfell Pike, happy to be alive, and I don't care where I finish. Uh, anyway, that, oh, by the way, uh, and so just on that note, I have never done the Bob Graham round. Uh, there's reasons for that, um, but, uh, but I don't care. Anyway, that's the story of the Bob Graham round, so thank you very much. Um, what's the time? Right. Um, 